Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to do a full review of the first year probability unit of learning. As part of this, we're going to look at probability scale, listing outcomes, the fundamental principle of counting, calculating probabilities, sample spaces, 2A tables, relative frequency or experimental probability, and expected frequency. So what is probability? So probability is the likelihood or chance of an event happening. So we hear about these all the time. So have a little think, where have you maybe heard of probabilities before? Where have you encountered them in real life? Where maybe have you seen them in other subjects? So we're going to start with the probability scale. So all of our probabilities are between zero and one. We then have 0 0.5, which is about halfway, and we have words which describe each of the areas on this probability scale. If something had the probability of 0, this would be said to be impossible. If something had a probability of 1, it would be said to be certain. If something had a probability of 0 0.5, it would, have, it would be said to have probability of even. If something was up at between 0 0.5 and 1 it will be likely and if it was between 0 and 0 0.5 it will be unlikely. So these are the five really important words that we are going to focus on today. You're going to do a little bit of homework with it and you're going to really focus in on this probability scale. We often use the words like impossible when it's not actually true. So when you say to me miss that homework was impossible no, it wasn't impossible. It maybe was quite difficult, but impossible means there is absolutely no chance. Okay, so just be very careful about the words. We are using them in a mathematical um, context now, so you have to be very careful. So here's our little probability scale. So I'm going to give you some examples. They love asking for examples. So what could be an example of something that's impossible? Well, if you roll a six-sided die, the chance of you getting a seven is zero so it's impossible to get a seven because there's no seven on the dice if we think about something that's unlikely it's unlikely that it will snow in june so it's not completely impossible you know there is still as small a chance as there is there is a chance it could happen but it's very unlikely an even chance then imagine if i had and um, this is a chessboard or a draft board and what's the chance of landing on a black or a white square it doesn't matter this one and um, picks um i don't know what that's picked it's a little bit off but if we pick a black square then that would be even even happens when there is the same chance of getting two outcomes so for example if you toss a coin it can be a heads or a tails if you roll a dice you have an even chance of getting an even number because half the numbers are even and so on an example of likely it is likely that you're going to grow a bit taller. It's not certain. Some of you may not, but um, some of you may have already grown as tall as you will grow, but it's likely you will grow taller compared to where you are now as a first year. And an example of something that's certain is that Christmas is on the 25th of December. This doesn't change. This is certain. They're not going to turn around and go, well, actually, we're going to start putting on the 22nd. It is the 25th of December. So let's look at some scenarios. So eating junk food and avoiding exercise will make you lose weight. So have a think. Do you think that that's impossible, unlikely, even, likely, or certain? So eating junk food and avoiding exercise will make you lose weight. So that will be considered unlikely. If you said impossible, well, there may be people who will do that and lose weight because everybody is different. But it's very unlikely that this would work. Second example, eating five fruit and vegetables per day helps to prevent disease. What do you think? Is it impossible? Unlikely, even, likely or certain? So this would actually be likely. So we're talking about it is very likely that having a good diet helps to prevent diseases, but it's not for it's not certain. People get diseases all the time who are very, very healthy and who eat very healthy, but it's very likely to help. 
the good attendance at school has a positive effect on achievement. Oh, I've moved that too fast. <laughs> so this is likely. So we have good attendance, then it's likely you're going to do well. People sometimes have very good attendance and don't do so well. And sometimes people have bad attendance and they do exceptionally well. So it is only likely, it's not certain. The next baby to be born in Kylo is going to be a boy. What do you think? Would that be impossible and likely even likely or certain? So this would be even because it's kind of a 50-50 chance because it's going to be a boy. It's going to be a girl. And we know that actually the odds would be slightly up, but pretty much even. So what is... The chance that the 7th of April falls on a Tuesday in 2020 and that is certain so you can go back and double check your diaries if you want to um, confirm but that is something that is certain that won't change there's no chance that it'll be different there's no chance they'll randomly decide okay just before that oh we, we actually had it on a way so what is the chance that I'll be able to speak fluent Russian in the next five minutes so this will be impossible there is nobody that would be able to do this so this would be an example of something that is impossible so let's take a look at an example we're going to do a probability scale example for each event below mark on the probability scale an estimate of its probability so here is our probability scale um what is the probability you draw a red card in a single or in a single pick from a complete 52 card deck so um there are red cards and black cards and it's half and half so that will go here it will be an even chance so that will have an even chance it will rain for a week without stopping mm, what do we think it depends on the week and um, in ireland you generally say likely but actually we've had quite good weather so i'm going to put that down here it is unlikely that that will happen um, a baby will be born in Ireland today. Um, I'm going to go and say that there probably has already been a baby born in Ireland today. So that is certain. And out of a bag of red and yellow marbles, a blue marble is drawn. Um, no, that is definitely not. That definitely will not happen. So we have even, I would say unlikely. I'd even nearly go very unlikely. This is certain. And then this would be impossible. So if you're asked to draw a probability scale, this is what we're talking about. So listing outcomes. So when you when a dice is thrown, um, you will get a one, two, three, four, five, or a six. So each of these results. Um, are also known as an outcome. So when we're in probability, the word result is often replaced with an outcome. Throwing the dice, that is called an event. So each event has outcomes and we would generally work out the probability of these outcomes. So if I asked you then, what are the outcomes when you toss a coin? So there are two outcomes, we get heads or tails. So what about if I have two events? What are all the possible outcomes? So if I tell you to roll a dice and to toss a coin, so what are all those possible results that we could have? So remember, we get heads or tails, and I'm gonna use H and T to help us with the coin. And you could get a heads with a one on the dice, a heads with the two on a dice, a heads with the three on the dice, and so on. Or then you'll get a tails with the one on a dice, and so on. So if we look at all those outcomes, how many outcomes are there? So you take a second if you want to count one, two, three, four, five. So there are actually 12. 12 total outcomes. Um, think about that. So if you roll a dice, there are six outcomes. And when you toss a coin, there are two outcomes. So how do you think that you get from six and two to 12? So when we're dealing with events with a large number of outcomes, listing all the outcomes become more difficult. 
So do we have a shortcut? So did anyone come up with a shortcut? So how would you have six and two and then somehow twelve? Well, that whole thing is actually called the principle, uh, the fundamental principle of counting. So there are twelve outcomes when you throw a dice and toss a coin. So the dice has six outcomes, the coin is two outcomes. So how we end up with twelve is we actually multiply. So the fundamental principle of counting is all about multiplication. So six by two is twelve. So let's think about that in terms of a table. So this is called a two-way table. And we'll look at this in a bit more detail next week. And if you look at the left-hand side, it is the outcomes for the coin. So that is two. And along the top are all the outcomes for the dice. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So when we make a table, all the outcomes fit neatly in this. And the 12 comes from the idea of six columns. So six outcomes across the top and two rows so two um two rows so two outcomes along the sides that's 12 outcomes so that fundamental principle of counting simply means multiply so let's take a look at some examples the cards below show numbers enclosed in a circle or a triangle so that i only put that up there we don't really need question three it's really question four the cards in question three are mixed and turned face down Neve turns over one card. It has a triangle with a six on it. She turns over another card. Is she more likely, sorry, is it more likely that she gets a number greater than six or a number less than six? So we need to understand how many outcomes there are. So if we think about our six, so this is the one we had. So let's think of the ones that are bigger. So greater than a six. So this one is greater. I'm gonna use a plus. This one's greater this one's greater, this one's greater, and then this one's lower um, or less than and less than. So is it more likely she'll get a number greater than six than a number less than six? Um, yeah, because there are more cards with a number bigger than six than a number smaller than six. So yeah, yes. Because, see, do I have this written? Yeah, there's three cards less than six, four cards greater than six. So she is more likely, so it's, sorry, it is more likely that the card will be greater than six. So don't forget to say, I forgot to say my yes. So answer the question that is there. So that's all about So then here are three spinners. So we have a spinner with one, two, three, four, one, three, four, four, and then a bigger section of two, and then three and four. When all the spinners are spun, which spinner has the greater chance of landing on four? And that would be B. And the reason it is B is because B has two possible outcomes that are four. Which spinner has the even chance of landing in two? And that is C. Remember, it kind of, half the time it could land on C, half the time it won't. So we have here, uh, half of the spinner is number two. Which spinner has no chance of landing on two? Uh, that would be B because it doesn't have a two. And all the spinners have the same chance of learning on, landing on a certain number. What is it? And that would be three because they all have one quarter that have a three. So the spinner has 12 equal sectors. When the spinner is spun, write down the number of outcomes for each of these events. So the spinner stops on pink. So there are six outcomes. The spinner stops on a letter. There are four outcomes. The spinner stops on a number in a white sector. So it's got two things here now, number and white. So there's only two. And a spinner stops in a letter and a white one. There's four. And what is the, ch uh, how many outcomes are there where the spinner stops on an even number? There are four. So when we talk about calculating probabilities, imagine when a coin is tossed that there are two equally likely outcomes. Now, just be very careful that there is a big difference between even, so 50-50, and equally likely. In the case of a coin, yes, we have an even chance, so 50-50 chance, and we would say that each of those outcomes are also equally likely. So basically what equally likely means is the probability of getting the outcomes is the same. 
And you might say, but surely that is 50-50. But only if there's two outcomes. Imagine other cases where the outcomes are equally likely. For example, a die. Imagine when we roll a die, there are six outcomes. It is the same chance to get a one as it is to get a six. So they're all equally likely, but they couldn't all be a 50-50 chance. So the probability of getting a tail when we toss a coin is a one in two chance or a one chance in two, whatever way you want to say it. But how we write this is P with a bracket. That means the probability of, and then in the bracket says head, so getting a head is equal to one over two or a half. So for equally likely outcomes, the probability of a given outcome is I'm sorry a probability of an event is the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes and the favorable outcome is the outcome that you want so Tony tosses a coin what's the probability of getting a head so favorable outcome how many heads are there on a coin and that is one now bear with me I have to use English money because they actually have heads on it the euros unfortunately don't so I borrowed some English money to do this so there's my heads and what are the possible outcomes so there are two other, there are two actual outcomes. It could be tails or it could be heads. So you have a one in two chance. So let's look at a dice. Amy rolls a fair die. What is the probability of getting a four? So there is only one four and all the possible outcomes on a dice. So there could be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five and a six. So it has a one in six chance of rolling a four. All of the numbers on the dice have an equal chance of appearing unless you have a dice that you're cheating with. Um, but normal, plain old ones that come with your Monopoly or any other board games you might be playing, they would be a fair dice. So let's look at another example. And this I'm gonna do a little bit with. So I have a bit of smarties here. Um, and we're going to take a look at what's in the tube of smarties. So in my tube of Smarties, I've laid them out by colour and I've made them in nice neat columns here because, you know, for maths, this is the kind of thing we like to do. And this is what came in my Smarties, um, my tub of Smarties. So I have three pink ones, I have four brown ones, I have three blue ones, I have four orange ones, I have three yellow ones, two red ones and a green one. So how many Smarties are there all together? <laughs> Go to so counting three, six, seven, and so on. And there are 20. There are 20 in total. If anyone sees some quick ways of how you might do that, that's good instead of counting each of them individually. But there are 20 Smarties in my packet. So we're going to have that for our baseline. So we know that there are 20 in total. So I'm going to put all my Smarties back in the tube and I'm going to pick a Smarty at random. So what's the probability that it's green? So let's go back. We said, well, the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. So how many green Smarties are there? So there's one green Smarty and there are a total number of 20 Smarties. So the probability of getting a green will be one in 20. And that's a very interesting number because if I said to you what fraction of my Smarties are green, it would be the same answer. So when we talk about probabilities, it actually is the exact same as me just asking about what fraction. So, and that never changes. That's even up to the leave insert. You'll be learning that. So probability is the same as fraction. So if the probability piece confuses you, don't forget that it's just the same as saying what fraction. So now if I put all the Smarties back in the tube and I pick one at random, what is the probability that it's brown? Remember, if I ask you what's the probability that it's brown, it's the exact same question as what fraction of the Smarties are brown. So there are 20 Smarties in total. There are four brown ones. So the probability of picking a brown Smartie is four out of 20. Now, we've already studied fractions, so you will know that actually, if you gave me that as an answer, I'd say, mm, it's not fully correct because it can be simplified. It can be made simpler. So how we make it simpler is we divide the numerator, the top, 
and the denominator, the bottom, by the same number. So the number that divides into both of them is 4, so that will simplify to a fifth. So we'll always give our fraction answers in their simplest form. And generally, with probability, our answers will be fractions. So now, all the smarties back in the tube. So I'm going to make this a little bit more challenging. So if I pick a smarty at random, what is the probability that it's yellow, or sorry, it's orange or yellow? So I have, remember, 20 smarties. So how many of the smarties are orange or yellow? So if we look, there are four orange and three yellow. So there's a total number of smarties that are orange or yellow. It's seven. So then the probability of picking an orange or a yellow will give me seven out of 20. Now, that can't be simplified. Okay, seven out of 20, it cannot be simplified. So that's our final answer. So then all the smarties back in the tube, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try another one here. If I pick a smarty at random, what's the probability that it's not blue? Okay, so this is an interesting one. So not blue. So we have 20 smarties. So how many smarties are not blue? Well, I have pink, brown, orange, yellow, red, or green. So any other colour is okay. So there are 17. Now, did I go and count all of those 17? Or is there a more clever way that I could do that? Well, if there's 20 Smarties in total and three are blue, how many are not blue? So that will give us our 70. So then the probability of picking, or the probability of not picking blue or picking a Smarty that's not blue, whichever way you want to say it, make sure that not is there, is 17 out of 20. And again, this is in its simplest form. So now we're going to do just um, more book-like examples. Now we put the Smarties away. So these counters are put in a bag and one is selected at random. So I have a yellow, a red, a yellow, a red, a red, a green and a green. What is the probability that the selected counter is red? So there are three red out of how many counters have we got? So we have seven counters, so that is three out of seven. What is the probability that the selected counter is green? So there are one, two green out of, again, seven counters. So my answer is two out of seven. Mm. What is the probability that the selected counter is yellow or green? So yellow, there are two. Green, there are two. So how many yellow or green counters are there? There are four. So that gives us four out of seven. What is the probability that the selected counter is not green? Okay, so if it's not green, that means it can be yellow or red. So that means there are five counters it can be out of seven. So that is five out of seven. Do you notice anything interesting about our answer to number two and our answer to number four? And if you notice something interesting about those two answers, that is not a coincidence. So the probability of selecting green is two sevenths and the probability of selecting not green is five over seven. And when you add them together, you get seven over seven, which is one. And if you remember back to our probability scale where we had it on Tuesday, we said that the scale went from zero to one and one was certain. So if I said, what's the probability of getting a green counter or not a green counter? Well, yeah, it's definitely going to get green or not green. So that is a nice little fact that we'll see a little bit more about um, when you go into second year. So let's start looking at two events. When we ended last week, we were talking about an event and an event would be something like rolling the dice. When we talk about an event, it has a number of outcomes. These are the results that we get. So when we started looking at listing outcomes, we worked on ways that we can list what happens when there were two events. So we had when we tossed a coin and when we rolled a dice. For example, we tossed 
two coins. I'm just simplifying it a little bit. So two coins, what could happen? Well, I could get heads on the first and heads on the second, heads on the first and tails on the second, tails on the first and heads on the second, and tails on the first and tails on the second. So there are four different outcomes. We also talked about that being linked to this fundamental principle of counting. Because if one event has two outcomes and the other event has two outcomes, then in total they have two multiplied by two, which is four outcomes in total. So what are all our possible outcomes? So there's only two outcomes for each event that the total number of outcomes for both events is two multiplied by two equals four. Fundamental principle of counting. So that was pretty okay to list them. But what about here? If I asked us what happens if I toss or rolled two dice? What are all the possible outcomes? So before I do that, hmm, let's think how many outcomes there are. So when I roll a dice, just one, there are six outcomes. So I can get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five or a six and if I roll the second dice there's also six outcomes so then using the fundamental principle of counting I will have six by six outcomes which is 36 outcomes and that is a lot of outcomes to write and I'm really lazy and I want a better way to do this than trying to list them all because 36 I'll probably end up missing one or getting one wrong or can't remember it or listing one twice so it's just going to be messy we need a better way so we can use what's called a sample space or this is also known as a two-way table so what this does is it helps us to organize our information it allows us to really clearly show the outcomes. We'll be able to use this to move forward as well, but for the moment, let's just figure it out. So in this first box here, so let me grab my highlighter. So in this first box here, it means I roll a one and a one. Here, it means I roll a three and a two. Uh, here, I've rolled a five and a four. So notice that i make a box that is six rows by six columns and that actually gives us that 36 and we touched on that a little bit when we did our fundamental principle of counting so our sample space diagrams make sure you don't forget any outcomes and it makes us easier it makes it easy to work out probabilities so we use sample space diagrams to make our life easier Okay, and that is so important. These are to make our lives easier. And if you're moaning about drawing these out and drawing the tables, okay, I get it. But in an exam situation, they'll give you the table and you just fill it in. So it's much easier. So a little bit of pain at the moment while we're working um, in our copies. But when we start meeting these in like exam questions and worksheets, the tables will be drawn for us. So sample space diagrams are very useful when you want to calculate the probability of a set of outcomes given two events. So what is the probability if I roll a dice and toss a coin that I get a heads and a three? I don't know. How would we even do that? Okay, so that's a really tough question because I have two events. So I'm not really sure how to deal with it. But because I have two events, let's set up a table. So here's my table. I have heads and tails at the top. That's the outcome for when I toss a coin. I have one, two, three, four, five, six down the side because that's my out they they are my outcomes when I roll my dice. I have H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, and then T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. So let's go back to the question. What is the probability of getting a heads and a three? So look at your outcomes. Where is their heads and a three? So probability is number of favorable outcomes, number of possible outcomes. There's my heads and three. There's only one out of how many outcomes in total do we have in that table? We have six down here and six here. So total of 12. 
So we have a 1 in 12 chance. So what is the probability of this 1 in 12? Without that table, that was a really complicated question. With that table, it's 1 in 12. It's super easy. Okay, so it does... I promise, make our lives easier when we're dealing with tough questions. So what's the probability of getting a tails and an even number when we roll a dice and toss a coin? So let's look at where on our table we have a tails and an even number. Remember, an even number is a number that is divisible by two. So there are numbers that end in zero, two, four, six, and eight. So we have tails and two, tails and four, tails and six. So that is three outcomes out of a possible 12. So that's three and 12. But you're all sitting there going, no, can't be three and 12 because you have to give your answer in the simplest form. So we can divide above and below by three, which gives us a quarter. And that's our final answer. Let's move this up to a really complicated question and a question that might be very valid. I don't know what you guys are doing at home, but some of you might have broken out Monopoly. Hopefully you all know what Monopoly is. It's a board game and it's a board game that contains two dice and to move you roll the dice and you add the scores on the dice. Um, what is the probability of getting a given score? Well, that's kind of complicated because you're not only rolling the two dice you're also adding the answers so surely that is too complicated for us to be able to figure out but not if we use our sample space or two-way table so let's look about filling in this table i put a plus up here to remind us that we're adding so simply i go to each space and i write in when i find my pen I write in the answer. So here I roll a one and a one. So when I add them together, I get two. Here in this box, it was a two and a one. So I get three. Let's take a random box. Five plus a four is nine. So let's start filling it in. I'm gonna get rid of all my workings because I have a much neater version here. Get rid of all these scribbles, but we're simply filling it in. And this is all the different scores you can get when you're playing Monopoly. Hmm. So what number there appears the most? Take a look at it. I love doing this question because when you look at that sample space, there's a lovely pattern to it. And um, you'll see that the center line here are all sevens and there's six ways to get a seven. And then they start coming out from the seven. So here we have uh, five ways to get an eight and five ways to get a six. And then we have four ways to get a nine and four ways to get a five and three ways to get a 10, three ways to get a four, two ways to get a three, two ways to get a 11. And then there's only one way to get a two and one way to get a 12. So we've a lovely pattern here. So what number appears the most? It is the number seven. And what numbers, plural, appear the least? And that is two and 12. So what other questions could we be asked? Well, what's the probability of scoring a seven? So remember probability is how many favorable outcomes over a total number of outcomes. So how many ways is there of getting seven? One, two, three, four, five, six out of a total number of outcomes of, mm, I'm not going to count all those because I'm lazy. I have a table that is six across and six down. So six by six, there are 36 outcomes. So my answer is six over 36. But you know that that's not our final answer because it needs to be in its simplest form. Six divides into the top, six divides into the bottom. And my answer is one in six. What's the probability of squaring a five? Okay, so let's count our fives. We have one, two, three, four out of a total number of 36. Again, it's not our final answer because we need to put it in its simplest form. We divide the top by four, bottom by four, and we get one in nine. I'm gonna ask a tricky question now. 
So pause it, see if you can answer it, and then check your answer. What is the probability of scoring a number less than five? Okay, so pause it. Pause it. Okay, I hope that you pause it and you weren't cheating. So what is the probability of getting less than five? Well, what numbers are less than five? So we have fours, threes, and twos. So how many in total are less than five? Now, less than five, would I include five? Well, less than five, no. Five is not less than five. Less means smaller. So there are currently six numbers in my table that are less than five. So our answer is six and 36, which is one sixth. So let's look at an example. Sam has a bag and in the bag, he put six blue balls and four red ones. So here they are in this shopping bag. What is the probability of getting a red bulb? Okay, so hopefully we're all okay at this point. There are four reds out of a total of 10. So we get four in 10, but we also know that actually it could be simplified. Oh, and they didn't simplify it, but it would have simplified to two over five. So then he picks one ball and records it and puts it back. He then picks a second ball, records the color. What are all the different outcomes? So now this is interesting because we now have two events. We don't just have one single event. We don't just have one pick. He takes two picks. So we can draw something like this. So he could pick a blue and a blue, or maybe he'd pick a blue and then he picked a red, or maybe he picked a red and then a blue, or maybe he'd picked a red and then another red. So there are four different outcomes that he could have had. Now, some of you are saying, but I could have told you that that was four using the fundamental principle of counting. Two outcomes for the first pick and two outcomes for the second pick. Fundamental principle of counting says two multiplied by two equals four. So using a sample space, we could do something like this. But are each of these four outcomes equally likely, given that there's a different number of red and blue balls in the bag? Hmm. And the answer is no. So you might think you have the same chance of getting all four, but you're not because if you go back to the question, we had more so remember, we had more of one ball than we had of the other. So in this case, because they're not all equally likely, we're going to use something called a probability tree diagram. So what does this look like? Well, we're going to draw branches. That's why it's called a tree diagram. It has branches. So we start at our starting point and it could go either way. We could pick a blue ball or we could pick a red ball. So there are two outcomes. Then we have a second pick. So maybe we had a blue ball and then we would have got either a blue ball or a red ball. Or if we had picked a red ball first, we get a blue ball or a red ball. Hmm. And now we have all the different outcomes. So same outcomes, but we're going to have a much easier way to figure out the probability. So example, a coin is flipped three times. Use a tree diagram to show all the possible outcomes and probabilities. So we have, it could be heads or it could be tails. If we get heads, the second flip, we could get heads or we could get tails. If we'd had tails, it could be heads or it could be tails. That's gonna get very big very quickly. So we have heads could get another heads or tails. That tails could give me heads or tails. This head give me head or tails and this gives me heads or tails and mine is not very pretty at all but yours could be much prettier now let's make a look at our outcomes that could be head heads and heads or we could have heads heads and tails here we have heads tails and heads heads tails and tails Ooh. He uh, ooh. tails heads Heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, 
and finally tails 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 and there are no oh no sorry one two four six there are eight miscounting eight outcomes now we could have used our fundamental principle of counting two outcomes by two outcomes by two outcomes two by two is four by two is eight but they wanted us to list all the outcomes now with heads and tails they'll all have the same chance so each outcome is going to have a one in eight chance of occurring so when we talk about relative frequency i prefer to call it experimental probability because when we call it experimental probability it makes sense because it's the probability that we get from an experiment so sometimes it can be too difficult to work out the probability of an event we may need to take emotion and or pressure into account along with the never-ending list of other things which may affect the outcome for instance there is enormous pressure on a penalty taker in football matches maybe he'll slip in the rain in this case we often rely on statistical evidence to find what's called a relative frequency or the experimental probability so if i asked you to take a shot on a goal or on a basketball hoop there is either you'll you'll score or you'll miss so you might say well is that like 50 50 chance well mm, i don't think it's 50 50 maybe it is in some cases but what they do is instead they look at the performance that has happened previously to make a judgment so if you ever watch any sport so i'll take soccer for example if somebody's taking a penalty they might discuss how many penalties that person has taken over the season and then how many of those penalties they've scored that will give us a good indication of a probability of making the next one so using what's happened in the past to decide or to help predict what will happen in the future so for example if you're on a basketball team and your team has won eight out of the last 10 matches you'd say that you must be pretty good so then the chances of you winning the next game are pretty good but if you were a basketball team and you won three out of the last 10 games you're probably saying oh you're not great so the chance or the probability of you uh, winning your next game is much lower in fact that probability will be three out of ten so how we calculate this experimental probability is the times it's happened over the times it's tried so how many goals did you score and how many did you try and score so maybe you scored four out of your 10 penalties that will give us a probability of four out of 10 or two out of five so it's just a different way of getting a probability and it's much more real world and it's much more likely that we'll see this in sports and lots of other places so let's take an example the penalty taker for a soccer team took 25 penalties during the season he scored 20 of them what is the relative frequency now remember relative frequency is another way to say experimental probability um what is the relative frequency of scoring a penalty so based off experience he scored 20 out of 25 now you all have done fractions with me this year and know that this is not in the simplest form divide above and below by five and that gives us a four in five chance of scoring so the probability of him scoring based off his history is going to be four and five so then we're going to look at something that's called um, expected frequency okay so this example is expected frequency what do we expect based off probability frequency uh, when the same player takes 10 penalties in next season how many do you expect him to score so remember i've continuously made the connection between probability and the fraction of things so for example there's a four in five chance he will make the next penalty but that's also another way of saying he scores four fifths of his penalty so to get the expected frequency we multiply our probability by the number of times that we've done something so four fifths by ten now you can do this yourself so that's four over five by ten over one multiply across the top and across the bottom and that gives us eight 
or you could have gone straight to your calculator to do it. So we would expect that the player would make or would score eight out of those 10 penalties. 